Welcome back to our channel, Hume's Little Homestead. I'm really excited about today's video as well as a little nervous because I don't know much about this subject, this topic just yet. I'm just sharing what I'm learning as I go. So today I am going to attempt to repot the Venus fly traps that we bought at Lowe's and Walmart. Ryan surprised me with this red one because I was getting excited learning about Venus fly traps and just distracting me from, you know, just trying to learn something new and trying to move forward with life, distracting me from the trials that we've been going through. So the first thing I needed was I needed two pots to repot these Venus fly traps. And I ordered, I have to show you what I ordered. I wanted to repot my cactus plants. So I thought I'm gonna order pots online that are really cute. And you guys, the pots came and they are just massive, like <laughs> way too big for my cactus plants that are still very small, which I'll show you now. Like that is just too big of a pot unless I was doing like a cactus garden or something. So I went ahead and recycled my older pots and I'll save these large pots for something because they're very cute. I love the color. I ordered them on Amazon and I just started laughing when I opened the box because I was like, that's a huge box. The pots I ordered are only this big and I opened it and they were like this big. And so that was really funny. But Anyway, if you want to see how to repot cactus, stay to the end of the video. I'm putting that at the end of this video is repotting cactus, but I really wanted this video to be all about Venus fly traps, what I've learned sharing with you because we had a few comments that said others might be interested in growing them or just learning about them. And I'm for one really excited to learn about them. So I'm going to put these cactus plants that I repotted back on the window. And if you want to see how to repot a cactus, stay till the end of the video. Now, a few things I've learned. I actually have notes. <laughs> a few things I've learned about these Venus fly traps so far is that they are from North Carolina. So they come in like a terrarium type thing. So you think that they're like tropical plants. But what I learned is why they come in that is just to protect the traps during traveling so they're not closing and trying to get insects because if they get bumped their traps will close so they're in those terrariums to save them from putting out too much energy closing when there's not real an insect there so that was kind of cool so they're not really tropical they're actually from the united states and i also watched a video i don't know if it's true or not but said that they are kind of endangered so don't just go out, like if you live in North Carolina or South Carolina where these grow, it's not a good idea to just go out and dig them up because it's good for them to stay in their natural environment. So another thing I had no idea about. So anyway, and the other thing is they look fragile, don't they? they they're so tiny and cute, they look fragile. But I guess they're supposed to be outside in full sunlight. So I'm not ready to test that yet because they've been living inside. So, and it's way too windy right now. But when summertime comes, I think I'll try and put my Venus fly traps outside so that they can catch bugs naturally outside and be in the natural full sunlight. So I'm really excited to test that out. Another thing is they can't handle regular tap water. They need distilled water, rain water or reverse osmosis water. I don't have reverse osmosis water. It doesn't really rain here very often. So I bought distilled water and I just got Arrowhead distilled water for this project and to water them. And I wrote on there, Venus flytrap water with a smiley face. Don't touch the Venus flytrap water like for my family. <laughs> and I learned that they have a rhizome. So I'm getting really excited to try and repot these and find their rhizome and a few more th notes that I have that says short roots are okay so if these guys have short roots I'm not gonna worry or freak out um, when uh, one of the leaves dies that's okay this is the one that ate a moth and I guess when they digest a really large mill that leaf naturally will fall off it will get yellow and black and then die like eventually it'll get black but if you look here in the center, 
there's these little, and I'll get a close up, these little tiny ones growing. And that's good. That means that the plant is healthy. And the trap is actually a leaf. So those little things, I didn't know what to call them. The little mouths. I thought they looked like mouths. They're actually a leaf. And they will catch their own food. So don't trigger the traps. Don't push on them to see them close. That can really make them sick and use up all their energy and they won't get a meal when they're closing. So don't trigger the traps. I mean, if it happens by accident, that's okay. But just don't be touching your Venus flytrap a whole bunch to make it close because it does look really cool when it closes. But it's not good for the plant. So if you're wanting to keep your plant alive, don't trigger them. They have little hairs inside that, that trigger. That's how they have three little hairs in their mouths, leaves, because they're leaves. And uh, when an insect crawls across and triggers two of the hairs, they close. And they don't stay closed unless it keeps wiggling. So I, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that. They will catch their own food, so don't feed them. But if you want to feed them, feed them a live insect and only every three to six weeks. You don't need to feed, and this is what we were doing. When I first brought this home, I would turn on the porch light and go out and catch a bunch of moths, and there were mosquitoes too, and I was just catching them and putting them in the little terrarium. There was a little hole to put it in there. So I was doing that and making sure that like every trap closed. And that's really bad. I was overfeeding it. So don't do that. Don't don't feel like you need to feed it like every day like a child or something. Because I was like, I need to feed my Venus flytrap. And I was like catching bugs and putting it in there. And I guess that's not good. You only need to, if you want to watch it eat, which is, it's kind of cool to see, then you can feed it like a live cricket or a live spider. Something soft, not beetles. Something soft that it can digest easy, like a fly. <laughs> Venus flytrap. So... Anyway, and they have, I guess they attract bugs to their leaves by themselves with some smell or pheromone. So anyway, that's all I know about Venus flytraps. Let's go ahead and try and repot these together. And let's try and find the rhizome. That's what I'm looking for, the rhizome. And I want to make sure there's new leaves growing. And my red one is coming out of dormancy. I can see that it's got some black leaves on it, which means they're coming out of dormancy, which is okay. So now I know that. And I'm also going to rinse them a little. I'm going to rinse them gently in distilled water so that just in case, because I know the first day I got the green one home, I just watered it with regular tap water and I, I didn't know. And so I really want to rinse them off with distilled water and make sure there's no minerals left and nothing like that. So, oh, I have to tell you what so they also don't grow in regular soil. So you can't use, you guess you could use potting mix, but you might kill your plant. So try not to use regular potting mix or anything like that. I will show you what I purchased so that we can repot these plants. I watched a bunch of videos and most of the videos recommended sphagnum moss, all natural so that it has no nutrients. The thing about it is, these plants are catching their nutrients. They don't need nutrients in the soil. It's actually can burn them and be really bad for their roots and leaves. So sphagnum moss mixed with perlite. That's the back of the bag. Perlite. And again, all natural. You don't want any added, you don't want any nutrients in the soil, nothing added like that. So what we're going to do is mix these two together. It's three parts sphagnum moss, one part perlite. So three parts sphagnum, one part perlite, and then I'm going to moisten the mixture with distilled water. And then I'm going to fill the pots that I'm putting them in. Oh, let's talk about pots really fast. Something I also didn't know, you don't want to use clay or terracotta pots because those have natural minerals and they will leach that into the soil and that can also kill your Venus flytrap. So that's another thing I learned is don't use any clay or terracotta. They look really cute, but I just went ahead and got plastic. Also, I'm going to go ahead and pop out this. Well, actually, I'm just reusing these plastic ones. And because I was so nervous, I rinsed them out and dried them. But you can just pop this out. Whoa, that flew so far. You could have seen that. <laughs> Anyway, I am going to be 
bottom watering these most of the time. I had a cayenne pepper in here, so that's why it's labeled. I wish I had like some blue paint that I could get rid of that permanent marker. Anyway, I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm gonna pop it out. And like I said, I'm gonna try and bottom water these. Let's see if it does it again. It did. I'm gonna see if I can put that in the That was not expected. It just shot my window. Okay, so these pots are ready. So this is plastic pots. We're the best. Plastic or glass, because glass isn't going to leach, but the thing about glass is if you're putting your pot outside, especially if you live in a hot climate like I live in Arizona, I don't want my Venus flytraps to get cooked in glass. So plastic is going to be my best option, and I think plastic is probably going to be your best option as well. So plastic has no nutrients, no minerals to leach into the soil, and it will stay cooler in the summer when you put your plants outside in full sun. First, I'm going to add water in, distilled water into this bowl. This is just going to be for rinsing off the Venus flytrap's rhizomes and roots. I want to get a close look at those. I'm going to set that aside. Next, I'm going to mix up the sphagnum moss and the perlite, and I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to just eyeball it by doing three handfuls of sphagnum, maybe. Wow, this is like really stuck together. One, two, and three. And then I'll do one handful of the perlite. This is interesting, it feels interesting. <laughs> I'm sure you can use gloves for this job. I don't mind my hands getting a little messy. So, one handful of the perlite. And it's like really light. I was expecting it to be like rocks. I don't know. They look like rocks. <laughs> but they're really light. Now I'm going to add some distilled water. Water, it's very dry still. All right, I'm going to add two more handfuls of moss and a half a handful of the perlite. This is a very spongy texture, so I'm going to call that good. I think that's good. Spongy texture seems probably good. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm such a beginner. I am not, uh, I have not successfully grown Venus tra fly traps yet. I'm hoping. So I'm going to gently put this in here. And I'm going to carefully just... Pat it down like I would regular soil for any other plant. All I'm trying to say is if you're coming to me for advice, uh, you're learning along with me. I'm not an expert yet. From what I've read, I think I understand what the best um, care for the plant is. But if you want a novice, <laughs> this might not be the right video for you. Okay, I think that's good. Now I'm going to, what I saw is they put a hole with their finger right in the center of the sphagnum. So I'm going to put a nice hole just in case my Venus flytraps have long roots. If they don't, I can always fill it in. So I've got a nice big hole ready to put the Venus flytrap. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, let's pull out 
Should we do the green one or the red one first? What do you think? I got the green one first, so maybe we should start with the first one I got a week before the red one. Let's do that. Okay. I'm going to zoom in. All right. I'm really nervous about this. <laughs> I don't want to kill my plant. And I'm just going to be making a mess on my table. This is my, my plant table that I use for all these kind of projects. So I'm just... And now, the video I watched said it's okay if a few traps close during this process. Oh my goodness, I feel like I'm... You know what? Back to my spoon here. I'm going to scoop it out with a spoon, so I... The back of the spoon. Let me see if I can squish... Oh, that's right, you're supposed to squish the pot. I should have watched the video we watched. Okay. All right, we got it out of its tiny pot. Now let's see if we can find, gently pull away this and look for the rhizome. Okay, sorry I'm shaking. Okay, we're gonna pull it apart. And this one looks like it was planted in sphagnum moss. This seems like the same texture I just worked with. Okay, I don't want to damage any of the roots here. So I'm gently pulling it away. This one has long roots. Oh, unless that's magnum. I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, there's the rhizome. I see the rhizome. I'm gently, gently pulling this away. I'm not tugging. I'm not forcing. Very gently here. The rhizome looks very healthy. So that is good. Others who have had their plant for a long time have babies on their plant sometimes too. All right. Oh, I really hope I'm not killing this plant, you guys. <laughs> okay, I think those, those black things are the roots. Okay, I'm gently pulling that away. And we can see the rhizome here and the roots here. And now I am going to gently dip this plant in the distilled water that I have right here because I want to rinse, rinse the roots because I know I watered it the wrong way the first day. And it might have been watered for, with tap water in the store too. Please don't touch that, Emmett. Thank you. Okay. Well, neat. So here's the rhizome, and these are the roots. Okay. I'm just going to gently clean that up. There we go. I wanted to get that sphagnum off of there. Okay. So I'm going to dip it down in this water here. I'm just going to rin gently rinse it in the distilled water. Okay, now I'm going to plant it. You know what? I want that cleaned off. So I'm going to put it in the hole that I've prepared. And I'm going to gently push this moss closer to it and push it down around the rhizome.
Okay. Some of my traps closed while I was doing this. I'm not going to stress about it. Actually, it looks like all of them closed. <laughs> I'm just going to hope that I'm doing the right thing for the plant. Okay, now I'm going to rearrange these leaves while I'm here, and then I'm not going to touch this plant at all. <laughs> I'm just going to, it says two weeks to kind of let them recuperate before you put them outside or anything. Get that one out of there. Okay, let's do the second one. It looks pretty. Now this plant is potted in something else. I think it's called peat moss. So I'm really excited to get this plant out of the peat moss and put it in sorghum. Sorghum. <laughs> no, we're not dealing with molasses right now. Put it in sphagnum moss. So let's pull this one out and see what the roots are doing. And I'm excited to rinse this one off, too. Oh, look at that. That one has beautiful roots. Look how long those roots are. Maybe the peat moss is better. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just learning. So I'm going to gently pull all this away. Oh, look, that rhizome is beautiful. Okay. a very healthy plant I think again I'm just so so gently pulling pulling this apart and it looks like there's two plants in here that's pretty cool there's two rhizomes so actually while I'm doing this I'm going to separate these two plants I watched a lot of videos on this so one rhizome here so gently pulling that apart and wow so neat! There's this bigger rhizome and this is the baby plant from this plant. What am I going to do? I think I'll put the baby plant in a small pot. I'll put the baby plant in the pot that the green one came in. Alright, I'm shaking. <laughs> I don't know why I'm shaking. Okay, I'm going to put this one down on the table and I'm going to gently rinse this one off in the distilled water. I'm gonna get as much of that off as I can. There we go. And you know, I'm gonna pinch these off while I'm here. These black ones, actually, I think I wanna use scissors. If any of them are feeling loose, I'll pull them, but I'm not going to do anything. Hard. Okay. Let me get a little bit of this. Just rinse that part off right there. Okay.
Oh, sorry, weren't centered here. All right. I'm gonna get some little scissors and trim off those black leaves. So I'm just gonna carefully, very carefully trim off the traps that are black. They would naturally fall off, from what I've read, so I'm not worried about doing that. Okay, that looks nicer to me. <laughs> this one has a little baby here. Let me point with the scissors. See that little baby growing right there? A new leaf, and there's another new leaf right there. So I'm going to cover the rhizome where it's starting to turn green with the sphagnum. I just remembered I had these little round plastic pots. My hand got it dirty. It was a brand new one. Um, and it's a little bigger than, so here's the pot that the red one was in, and here's the pot that the green Venus flytrap was in. So you can see this pot is a little smaller than this pot. And this pot is just a little bit bigger, and I think that will really help the Venus flytrap, it has the drainage holes in the bottom, it's a plastic, we're not going to be leaching any minerals, so I think this is going to be a good option instead of this little green one. Just because I'm looking at this root, and it's quite long, so I'm going to go ahead and use this pot.
one's little black ones off before I pot it so that I can have a little bit more control. All right, I'm going to gently pot this now. That root is long. All right, here is how they look after being repotted. And I honestly, I think they actually look better. They kind of look like they've perked up a little bit. The last thing I need to do is I'm going to pour a little bit of distilled water over them. I'm just thrilled that we got this little baby plant. This one looks really, really healthy to me. And I think this one, now that it's separated from that one, will do really well. And this bright green one just, they just look like they've perked up a little. I'll show you from the side. They look like they're perking up, especially this one. Just like, was so happy with what we just did. <laughs> I might just be in my head, but they just look happier to me. <laughs>
much for watching today. I am so excited that we got an extra little plant from these two and I just think they look really, really good. So thank you for watching if you haven't done so already. Emmett, what are you doing? <laughs> Please don't play with that, bud. Come say hi. Hi. Say, can you please subscribe? Good job. Plants. It's called a Venus flytrap. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Oh, he's going to get my tripod now. Bye. Oh, Bye. if you want to see the repotting of the cactus, I'll put it on. Whoa. Emmett, no. Bye. If you want to see the repotting Bye. of the cactus, I'm going to put it at the end of this video. So if you're interested in seeing another different kind of plant repotted. I've done cactuses before, but this one, I wasn't expecting this barrel cactus. Its root was way longer than I anticipated. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm excited about learning about these Venus flytraps. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. If you're still here, that means you would like to see how to repot cactus or cacti. I have two cactus, so I guess cacti. Now, what you're going to need is some kind of an old washcloth or a rag to protect yourself from the spikes. And I am going to be using this cactus potting mix and your new pots. I'm also going to use a butter knife. All right, so all I'm going to do is take this butter knife and go down along the edges of the pot to make sure that I loosen up all of that. That's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna take this rag. Well, first I'm gonna put dirt in the pots a little ways up. And then I'm gonna take this rag and wrap the cactus in it and dump it out so that the rag is gonna catch all the spines and not my hand. So let's do this. I'm gonna start with my smaller cactus here. I believe it's called a barrel cactus and my smaller pot. I'm going to fill the pot about halfway full. Actually, I'm going to use one of these plastic things to catch my mess. I'm gently pressing down the soil. Next, I'm going to get the cactus out. So I'm just running my knife down along the edges. The hardest part about repotting cactus is getting them centered in their pots, so we'll try our best here. Then we're gonna wrap the cactus in this towel. In fact, I'm going to use this with a handle because this one has really long spikes that I think are going to come through. Gently rotating the pot, I'm pulling the cactus and the pot. Okay. Now this is interesting, we can see what its roots are doing here. from when I repotted it a little bit ago. 
Well, this isn't working out. How <laughs> I had planned. I put too much soil in there. Holy moly, look at its roots. They were all the way down there. Okay. I'm wondering if this needs an actually needs a bigger pot. I'm going to set the cactus down right here. I'm going to pour some of this soil back. I'm going to make a hole for the cactus. I cannot believe how many roots it got. Okay. Let's see if that's good. So see, I'm still just using this towel to protect myself. Now we'll unveil it. Half of it. <laughs> I'm gonna pour dirt down in here. And I'm trying to get the cactus in line. Uh, I want it a little further down than I've got it. Well, this is difficult. There we go. Okay. So I'm putting the cactus down maybe half an inch below and now I'll begin pouring. Now look, it's not centered at all. To get it more centered, I'm using gravity and pushing where the roots are. And I'm gonna add soil in. Oh, I got a spine. That might happen. So I'm gonna pour the dirt in right here to try and center it. I'm just going to take a paintbrush, one of my kids didn't rinse it out once they used it, and I'm going to gently knock out any dirt that got around its spines. I don't think this particularly matters, it's just for aesthetics. <laughs> Clean it off a little. A couple of the spines are falling off. I think that will be okay. All right, first one is done. Now I'm gonna water it in. Eh. 
and we'll see how the dirt settles. I'm going to water over the cactus so any other dirt will wash down. And I'm going to go ahead and use this whole water bottle just to get the roots settled in. I was not expecting it to have such ginormous roots. I'm going to rinse that off too. So with cactus, you just have to use your tools that you have. Like I used a butter knife, a paintbrush, and a washcloth to protect myself from the spines. I'm going to put this in the window seal and it is ready. It's done. That's all nice and settled and we got it real centered too. I'm really really pleased with that. Hi buddy. Do you want to say hi? Now with your washcloth, there's going to be spines in it. So you take this by one of the corners and beat it outside so you don't get those spines in your hands or anywhere else you see them. See right there? They're all over. So that is why you use a towel. And just go beat it outside so that you don't get it on your hands or clothes. Don't touch. Look at the camera. Say cheese. Cheese. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, not like that. It did not work. 